Hi everyone, welcome. It's great to be with you. Thank you for joining to watch this video. This is the first of two videos that I've made about the Mass. Now we're at session nine in our confirmation programme. And I'd probably say the Mass is one of the most important sessions that we will cover on this course. And the reason I say that is because if you're serious about wanting to increase your faith, the church says that going to Mass as often as you can is probably one of the most powerful ways of achieving that. So let me tell you a little bit more about what I'm planning to cover in this video and the next one. So in this first video, I'd really like us to focus on what the Mass is and why Catholics go to Mass. I'm going to try and do that by focusing on 20 words that summarise what the Catholic Church teaches us about the Mass. So I'm hoping the second video will be a little bit shorter and that's going to start with a few frequently asked questions about the Mass and then most of the video will look at what actually happens in Mass and what the different parts and action of the Mass actually mean. So here is a reminder of the five keys to increasing our faith. And I'm really hoping by this stage on the course that this is all really familiar and you can remember all of those five keys quite easily. Now, as you'll see, Mass and the sacraments are right at the heart of the cross and right at the heart of the keys to our faith. And that's because going to Mass as often as we can is the most powerful way we can increase our faith. And I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll be able to see why that is. So it might sound quite ambitious, but I'm gonna try and summarize what the Catholic Church teaches us about the Mass in just 20 words. So here they all are. Um, to make them easier to remember, each word begins with one of the letters that are used to spell out the word Mass. So all of the letters begin with M, A or S. All of these 20 words are connected and many of them overlap. So that will occur to varying degrees. I'm not gonna read all of them out, um, but, and 20 words can be a lot to remember. So I'm just gonna invite you to try and remember just four of those words, because I think these four words, the ones in purple at the top of each letter, give us three of the most powerful reasons for why we should go to mass and try and go as often as we can. And so, Mass is a meeting, Mass is our men, and Mass is the source and summit. So I'm going to explain what all those four words mean now. So probably the most important reason why we should go to Mass is because the Catholic Church teaches us that at every Mass, Jesus Christ is truly and fully present. And he's present in four ways. He's present in the congregation, the people who are there. He's present in the priest. He's present in the readings, and he's most fully present when the bread and wine become transformed into his body and blood. So, Amen. So, I had to cheat a little bit here. A stands for Amen, and Amen is a word you often find at the end of prayers. And as we mentioned in our session on prayer, the church teaches us that Mass is our greatest prayer. And the reason for that is because if prayer is being connected with to God, there is nowhere on earth where we can be closer to God than in the Mass. And as we saw in the last slide, Jesus is truly present in every Mass. And we receive him in our hearts when we receive Holy Communion. Something else we also said in our session on prayer is that the prayer of the Mass incorporates all six forms of prayer. So the third and fourth words go together. The Catholic Church teaches us that the Mass is the source and summit of Christian life. This is quite a famous phrase that's commonly used when talking about the importance of the Mass. So what does it mean? Well, I think by the word summit, the Church means that Mass, going to Mass is quite simply the greatest and the most important thing that we can do in our lives. And the church doesn't just mean our spiritual lives, but it means our lives as a whole. And by the words source, the church is teaching us that the mass provides us with 
the origin and the strength for all the good things that we do in our lives when it comes to living out our faith. Our faith is all about sharing love and at Mass we meet the source of love. This is because at every Mass, as we've said before, we meet Jesus who is God and we know from previous sessions on our course that God is love. So let's just summarise those four words again and what they mean. So those, these four words I've just shown you, I think give us three of the most powerful reasons for going to Mass. So the first letter of each of these words, to make it easy to remember, actually spells out Mass. So Mass is a meeting. Jesus is truly and fully present at every Mass. Mass is Amen. It's our greatest prayer. And the two S's are for source and summit. The Mass is the source and summit of our Christian life. It's the place from which we get our power to live out our faith and to love each other, because that's what our faith is all about. And so going to Mass is the most important and valuable thing that we can do in our lives every day. Now, in theory, if you were to stop watching this video here, I think you would still have all the reasons that you need to go to Mass as often as you can. But I think there are so many more reasons to go to Mass and so many other things that, if you could understand, would help you see the importance of the Mass. So I'd invite you, if you can, to keep watching this video to find out more about these reasons and to learn what an amazing gift we have in the Mass. So I'm gonna take a look at all those words beginning with M. Uh, there are eight of them in total. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but um, I will just say a little bit about most of them. So we've looked at meeting already, so that's just a very quick reminder. Here's a really important one, and it just builds on what we've said before. Mass is a miracle, and that shouldn't really come as too much of a surprise given what we've already said. So at every Mass, we have two of the greatest miracles that have ever happened on earth. So we have the bread and wine, which is transformed into the body and blood of Christ. And we call this miracle transubstantiation. You don't need to worry about remembering that word. Another really crucial miracle is that Jesus' sacrifice on Calvary is made present again and it's offered up to God the Father at every Mass. And both these events occur during a part of the Mass called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And in our second video, we'll learn more about that and the other parts of the Mass. Something else that you will know is that Mass is a meal. It's a banquet, it's, our, it's a special celebratory Thanksgiving meal. And Another word for the Mass is actually the Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving. And in every Mass, there is so much to celebrate. We celebrate all our blessings, all the good things in our lives, our family, friends, health, talent, safety, security, material possessions. The list could go on forever. Um, most importantly, we also celebrate and give thanks for Jesus' life, death and resurrection. God's invitation to us to be members of his family by our baptism, and we'll talk more about baptism in our next session, and our invitation to share a similar banquet with the Holy Trinity in heaven. So our Cardinal Vincent Nichols describes the Mass as the promise, our promise of future glory, and he's written a book about the Mass that has exactly the same title. I want to say a little bit more, if I can, about the meaning of the word meal. So the Mass is a very special kind of meal because we become what we eat. So at every Mass, we eat and drink the body and blood of Christ if we receive Holy Communion. And then Jesus becomes part of our bodies and we become part of the body of Christ. And this is why the body of Christ is called Holy Communion, because we become united to God and each other one body forever. So mass is then a, almost like a kind of spiritual marriage. Under the picture of Jesus, I've given you two quotes from the gospels that show that Jesus really did mean it when he said that 
When we are at mass, we are eating and drinking his body and blood. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. This is the last thing I'd like us to say about the mass being a meal. It's really to try and explain just one more quote from, from Jesus in the gospel. Let me start with the first part where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. What does he mean? I think Jesus is making clear to us that mass is a special meal because eating and drinking the body and blood of Christ gives us spiritual food and life. The Eucharist deepens and strengthens our faith more powerfully than anything else. As we said earlier, Mass is the most important of the five keys that can increase our faith. The remainder of that quote says, no one who comes to me will ever hunger or thirst. And I think in these words, Jesus is telling us that the Eucharist is the only thing on earth that can completely satisfy all our desires and bring us peace. And we talked to a bit about this in our very first session when we looked at you know why do we bother with faith and just to build on that a bit further we were created by God to have a relationship with him and there is nowhere that we can be closer to God than in the Eucharist and again as we said in that first session the closer we are to Jesus the happier we will be and there is no nowhere or no way sorry nowhere or no way on earth that we can be closer to Christ than in the Eucharist. So let's move on to a really crucial M. The Mass is a memorial. Now, I've got a few slides on this and the information here could be a little bit complicated, but I think it's really essential in order to understand uh, the Mass more deeply and what it means. So one of the biggest reasons we go to Mass is because Jesus asked us to. Jesus asked us to remember what he did at the Last Supper and the events that followed it. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Jesus created and gave us the Mass so that we could remember and be part of the most important thing that he did in his life. And that was the sacrifice of his life on the cross to save us from our sins. The key events that led to Christ's death on the cross and that he wants us to remember begin with his celebration of the Last Supper. Now, interestingly, during the Last Supper, Jesus himself was also celebrating a memorial. Jesus, with his disciples, was celebrating the Passover. Now, the Passover remembered that God spared his people, the Israelites, from death if they slaughtered a lamb and then spread its blood over their doorways. And you can see that in the, in the picture. They were also asked to cook the lamb and then eat it with unleavened bread. When the Jewish people celebrated the Passover, its memorial had special significance. The memorial made the original Passover present. So we can say that Jesus has given us a new transformed Passover and our mass as Catholics and the Passover have four things in common. They make present what they remember, there is a meal, there is a sacrifice that's offered up to save people from death and the sacrifice is eaten during the meal and the next slide just explains that in a bit more detail. So during the Last Supper, our memorial, or sorry, during the Mass, our memorial of the Last Supper makes Christ's sacrifice on the cross present. So although Jesus died on the cross only once, the Mass, every Mass, makes his death present once again. It's an absolute miracle, and it's also one of the central beliefs of our faith. Jesus sacrificed his life for us on the cross to spare us from death. This was the main reason why Jesus became a human being and he came to live among us in the first place. John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God, and that's because he was to become a living sacrifice. And during the Mass, we eat the body and blood of Christ, and effectively we are eating the sacrificial lamb. 
And finally, by Jesus' sacrifice and his death, we have the promise of eternal life with him. And this is the greatest hope of our faith. Now, if all of these teachings seem hard to believe and understand, honestly, don't worry. I think over time and with faith, these teachings will become easier to accept and it'll become more possible to see their truth and their beauty and their power. There are three more M words that I'd like to share with you and I'll, I'll do that very quickly. So mass is metamorphosis. So metamorphosis is a Greek word meaning transformation or change. When we receive Jesus' body and blood, we are transformed. Jesus comes to live in our hearts and we become what we eat. We become part of Christ's body, the church. And if we're open to the graces of the sacrament, we can become more like Christ. And crucially, through all of these changes, Jesus is calling us to transform the world. And we'll say more about this as the video unfolds. Something else that, again, really crucial, mass is meaning. Through the mass, we come to see the meaning and purpose of our lives. And this is communicated to us through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, speaking through the scriptures, the priest's homily and our prayers. God's doing that because he wants us to understand the depths of his love and his and his truth and his will for our lives. And through this self-disclosure, the self-revelation, God is showing us the meaning and purpose of our lives. To love him and love each other. The final end that I'm just gonna share with you is that mass is a mystery. It's probably the greatest mystery in the universe. And as Catholics, we believe a mystery is something that is true that God has revealed to us, we couldn't have come to know it otherwise, and we cannot fully understand it. Mysteries powerfully test our faith. And I really think that the teachings of the mass are some of the biggest tests of our faith. And again, I'd probably guess that maybe apart from Jesus, there's probably no human being who's ever fully understood the riches that the mass offers us and what it all really means. Now, some of you, if you're looking at your notes or if you've got great memories, would remember that there was actually one more M word on the list and that was mission. But this is very closely connected to the final S word on the list, which is sending. So I'm gonna discuss mission when I get to sending. So now let's move on to our A words and there are five of them. So mass is our men, we've covered that already. Adoration, appreciation, acclamation, and anticipation. So, as I say, we've already talked about the first one. Mass is our greatest prayer. And we often say amen after prayers, which is why I had to cheat and use that as, as the word. And we also said by being at Mass, we're expressing all six forms of prayer in the most powerful way possible. We're joining our prayers to the prayers of Jesus on the cross as his sacrifice on Calvary is made present. And I think we're also uniting our prayers to the prayers of the whole church throughout the world at this moment in time and throughout history, both in the past and in the future. And very quickly, here's just a reminder of what those six types of prayer are. And at Mass, I think the first three are particularly important and powerful. That's adoration, acclamation, and appreciation. So let's look at them very quickly in a little bit more detail. So adoration and acclamation, telling God that we love him and we praise him, are two really important components of prayer. It can be really hard to find the right words to tell God that you love him and praise him. And so going to Mass regularly can express our love and praise much better and more powerfully than anything else we can say or do. I think it's one of those classic cases where actions do speak louder than words. And as we said before, if we're looking at appreciation, another word for mass is the Eucharist. And Eucharist means thanksgiving. 
And so at every Mass, it's our opportunity to express our gratitude to God, to give him thanks for all the good things that we've received. Everything that we are, everything that we enjoy, everything that we have, we've achieved, comes from him. But God's greatest gift to us is our faith, his invitation to be his children, and his promise that we can have eternal life. The final A is anticipation. And so the Mass anticipates heaven. It gives us an early glimpse of what eternal life will be like. Now that might sound a little bit strange, but there are many ingredients of the Mass that are also true for heaven. So we know that Jesus is present in every Mass. We know from the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, that in heaven there will be worship and praise of God, and that's what the Mass is all about. And we know that in heaven we'll be united with each other and Our Lady in the communion of saints. And again, all of those things are true for every Mass. And finally, as we said before, the Mass is our promise of future glory. So the very last letter we need to think about that spells Mass is the letter S. And there are seven words beginning with S, and we've covered the first three of these already. So Mass is the source and summit of Christian life. It's a sacrifice, it's service, it's sharing, it's strengthening, and it's sending. So let's have a quick look at all of those. The Mass is the source and summit of Christian life. We've said that before. Here's a quick reminder of what it means. We've also said that the Mass is a sacrifice. And one of the greatest miracles of the Mass is that Jesus' sacrifice of his life on the cross at Calvary is made present again and offered up to God. So Jesus himself offers up this sacrifice to God the Father through the person of the priest. And it's almost like at every Mass, you know, we're kneeling in front of Christ as he is hanging on the cross in agony, as he's dying for us. Again, I'll just stress a point I made earlier in the video, that although Christ died only once, the Mass makes his death on the cross present each time. So, and by that sacrifice, Christ pays the price for our sins. And as a result of him doing that, we have this promise of eternal life with the Trinity. In heaven forever. So although Jesus' sacrifice is by far the greatest sacrifice imaginable, it's not the only sacrifice that takes place at Mass. As Jesus offered his life for us, we should also try and offer up our lives to him as a sacrifice. And that's what we're doing when we go to Mass. We're offering him our time, our talents, our possessions, our joys, sufferings, fears, hopes, dreams. All of those things we offer up to, to God at every Mass. Again, it reminds us that everything that we have comes from God. And all of those things that we offer God, Jesus will transform and perfect through the miracle of the Mass. Let's move on to another S, the Mass is service. So as we said previously, at the Last Supper, Jesus asked us to do this in memorial of me. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And there are many, many times in the Bible where, where Jesus makes it clear that he wants us to live out our faith. Jesus said, I have come to serve, not to be served. And Jesus wants us to serve him and our brothers and sisters. That's why God created us. And it's really important to remember this quote from Jesus, whatever you do for the least of my brothers, you do for me. And that was Mother Teresa's motto and a motivating factor behind all the amazing work that she did. And we'll talk more about her in our very final session when we think about living out 
our confirmation. Let's say a little bit more on service. By participating in the Mass as well as we can, by our prayers, our singing, perhaps by helping in any other ways like serving on the altar or reading at Mass, we are actually serving. This is a really important quote, um, which some of you may have come across before. When we receive the body and blood of Christ, we do it to become the body and blood of Christ. We're taking Jesus out into the world. So Holy Communion gives us the grace and the strength to live out our faith in our day-to-day -day lives. And finally, during the Last Supper, Jesus gave us the sacrament of holy orders to ensure that the Mass could continue to be celebrated and that God's people could be served through his priests. And as I say, we'll talk more about the idea of service in our very last session on the course, which is called Living My Confirmation. Sharing is a word that's very closely linked to the idea of service. We share our faith by being present at Mass. We witness to our faith. And this is something I think we don't often realise, even just by coming to Mass and doing our best to participate, we're already doing something really powerful to help share our faith. And it doesn't matter how young we are or how old we are, it's, it's something that we're all doing just by being there. But I think it's a really particularly powerful and encouraging sign that everyone who's at that mass, when they see young people there. And this is because, you know, by definition, you and all the other young people throughout the world today are the future of the church and the future of the world. And so the more young people go to mass, the more hopeful I think all of us can be about the future of the church and indeed the future of the world. By calling us to Mass, Jesus is also asking us to share everything in our lives as well as we can. So our time, our talent, our treasure, like our possessions, and particularly the good news about his love and his truth. And as we've said in a previous session, as I think St. Francis said, you know, preach often but rarely use words. So it's just by living our lives as God asked us to, that's one of the most powerful ways that we can share the good news with people. So we're very near the end of this video now. Um, strengthening is another really important word that helps us understand the meaning of the Mass. Mass strengthens our faith and helps us to live it out. And there are several reasons for this. This is because we become united with Christ. We receive Jesus in our hearts in Holy Communion. And Christ speaks to us directly in the readings and in the homily. And we receive spiritual food which nourishes our hearts and our minds. And so this enables us to grow in faith, hope and love. Something else that happens at every Mass is that the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit within us are strengthened. The very last S word is sending. The word Mass actually comes from the Latin word missa, and that means dismiss. So the sacrament takes its name from the sending forth that occurs at the end of every Mass. God calls us to Mass, indeed he called us to our faith, because he has an individual mission for each one of us. And God sends us out from every Mass we attend, strengthened to carry out his mission. When we were talking about the N-words earlier, I said I would link the word mission to sending. So what is the mission that Jesus has given us? Well, quite simply, it is to bring his love into the world. And that's through service and sharing, two of the S words that we've looked at, 
and then to return as soon as we can to the source of that love. And that is the mass. And strange as it may sound, this is the reason that God created us. And this is the meaning and purpose of our lives as far as he is concerned. So ultimately, mass is meant to make a positive difference, both in our lives and in the lives of everyone that we meet. The very last thing I want to say in this video before we finish is just to say a bit about the word disposition in connection with the mass. So we talked about disposition in the last session when we talked about the sacraments. Everyone in the Catholic Church understands that the teachings of the Mass are hard to understand and believe. The Church also teaches us that the graces and blessings contained in the Mass are treasures of infinite value. But ultimately, we can only receive the blessings contained in the Mass and all the other sacraments if we have open minds, hearts and souls. And we're also in a state of grace. We're free from mortal sin. And if we're not, we need to go to confession first, as we said in our last session on reconciliation. And so those words in blue are what we mean by the word disposition. So let me give you a very quick summary for this video. So the mass can be summarized in 20 words. They all start with the letters M, A, and S. The four most important words give us three crucial reasons for going to Mass. Mass is a meeting. Jesus is truly and fully present in every Mass in four ways. The Mass is our men. It's our greatest prayer. And the Mass is the source and summit of Christian life. And let me finish this video now with just giving you a reminder of those 20 words again. So thank you for joining to watch this first video about the Mass. If you found any of the ideas in this video difficult to get your head around, honestly, don't worry. The chances are you would be in excellent company. As I said in the video, the Mass is a mystery, and I don't think any of us can fully understand all of the richness or complexity, all the treasures that the Mass offers us. The Church simply invites us, as it does with all of its teaching, to accept its teaching on the Mass with trust and with faith. And I think the better able we are to do that, eventually we will begin to see that. Everything the church teaches not only makes sense, but also feels right, even if we can't fully understand why that is. So let me finish perhaps just by reminding you once again of one of the key messages from this video, which is that if you would like your faith to increase, by far the most powerful and efficient way you can do that is by trying to get to Mass as often as you can. And hopefully after this pandemic, we'll be able to get back very quickly to mass being available in every Catholic church at least once a day. And in our second video about the mass, what I'd like to do is to then give you a little bit more of an idea of what actually happens in a sacrament. So if you're able to, I really hope you could join me to watch this second video. And if you can, I will look forward to seeing you then.